Hello everybody and welcome to Des Moines University's mini medical school week number five, the last in the series. My name is Hannah DeGeest and I am the Community and Public Affairs Manager at DMU if you haven't already met me. And tonight's lecture is by Dr. Sarah Parrott from Des Moines University and it is on why every person needs an annual wellness exam. I think you're gonna find tonight really interesting and I hope that you send any questions that you have to me. You can e email them to questions at dmu.edu if you're not seeing my email address. And I would just love to get started tonight by telling you a little bit more about DMU. We have nine academic programs and it's kind of exciting because we just added a new one, which is a PhD program. So if you're interested in learning about all of our programs, um, maybe what those are, please go to our website, which is dmu.edu. And we have so much information there about all of our programs. And of course, if you have any questions or something's not there, please let me know. And I would be happy to direct you or answer the question for you. So along with our academic programs, we also have a multi-specialty clinic on Grand Avenue, and we're very proud of our clinic and we hope that you'll come to visit us. Dr. Parrott is a clinician in our clinic. She is in the family medicine department, and we hope that maybe you'll come see her. So I am going to introduce her now to you, and I hope that you, again, enjoy tonight's talk. And for those of you who have been joining us for every lecture in this series, tonight is your graduation. So congratulations for graduating mini med school, and I hope that I will see you again soon, hopefully in person, and stay warm and stay happy and healthy. Dr. Sarah Parrott received her Bachelor of Science in Journalism from the University of Kansas. She then went on to receive her Doctor of Osteopathic Medicine degree from Des Moines University. Dr. Parrott completed her residency in family medicine at the University of Kansas and was named Chief Resident. In 2017, Dr. Parrott was inducted into the Gold Humanism Honor Society. Dr. Parrott is an American Academy of Family Physicians Fellow. She is currently the chair of the Family and Internal Medicine Department at DMU, as well as a clinician in DMU's Family Medicine Clinic. Dr. Parrott lives with her husband, a 16-year-old son, and a 12-year-old daughter in West Des Moines in her home where she is known as the Chief Laundry Officer. Welcome, Dr. Parrott. Hello. I want to thank Hannah for that introduction and just add a little bit that my husband and I are um, not big fans of the cold up here um, in the Des Moines area um, is much colder than it ever was in Kansas City um, and the wind is well, fierce here but we are so enjoying um, living in Iowa and being in the Des Moines community and in whole um, we're excited to um, raise our kids here well they're sort of almost raised they're teenagers but uh, we still have a few more years of, of uh, raising them and uh, so we're excited to do that in such a great community um, and I personally am thrilled to have returned to my alma mater uh, to come back and teach teach medical students in the same uh, place that I learned to be a physician is um, it's a it's an honor um, it's a it's a challenge and it's a, a it's a definite um, blessing so before we get going I also need to uh, introduce just a couple of things I am not a fan of recording lectures I feel that when I'm live I do so much better I can engage the audience I can ask questions and you know call on you and you can shout things out and this is just kind of but um, it's where we are right now um, and I just wanted to thank you for being here with me part of what I do that I've noticed when I watch my recordings is I say um all the time. So I'm trying very hard to not um you to death. But forgive me in advance if I do. Another thing that I hope you'll forgive me is that when I'm nervous, and I'm super nervous right now, I do um, feel like my mouth gets super dry. So I have a little bottle of water and I will occasionally need to take a sip of it. And again, I hope that you will forgive me um, of that. Okay, so... Uh, Financial disclosures, Des Moines University is the only organization who pays me anything. And they just pay me to do my job. And um, this is a uh, part of my job. And I'm excited that this is part of my job because I would like to possibly have one or two of you decide to try out the Des Moines University Family Medicine Clinic. Um, I don't get any kickbacks from any 
vaccination companies or uh, drug um, companies or um, any rewards or anything. So um, what I'm saying to you is based on um, my experience, my beliefs, and some um, stated uh truths that are in the medical literature. So um, nobody, nobody is paying me anything to talk to you about what I'm talking to you tonight. Um, okay, so when I was preparing for this lecture, I wanted to find a picture of a um, multicultural family or multiracial family. And I found one and not only is this family um, have a variety of races reflected in it, as so many of our families do. My, uh, my own daughter is adopted and she's multiracial. And, um, but I also love that these are a multi-generational family. I see some kids, I see some people maybe in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and then I see some seniors. And this really reflects um, the, uh, the joy that family medicine providers have um, caring for um, people of every age group. We um, like to say that we can take care of people from the womb to the grave. And um, hopefully that those are spaced out by 90 to 100 years, but um, we um, very much enjoy taking care of people from every um, age group and um, every uh, racial background, ethnicity background, um, and we um, work well with interpreters, things like that. So before we uh, go on, I want to also um, share with you my, um, so basically I want you to, I want you to, by the end of this presentation, say, hey, Maybe I need to go get a wellness exam, or maybe my neighbor needs to go get a wellness exam, or my spouse needs to get a wellness exam, or my, uh, you know, adult child needs to go get a wellness exam. And we don't necessarily want you to come to Des Moines University Family Medicine Clinic unless you don't have a provider, and then give us a try. But if you have somebody that you are hooked up with and that you follow with, I think that is just absolutely great. I don't want you to feel that um, you have to come to see us for your annual wellness exam. I just want you to get an annual wellness exam. So if you've got a provider that you're comfortable with, great. I want everybody to have a provider they're comfortable with. And see, here we go, water time. Okay, so um, you probably thought when you signed up for mini medical school that you were going to learn something about being a physician. Well, you know what? I teach this, uh, I teach something similar to this to the medical students here at uh, DMU because we're going to be talking about the recommendations by the big um, health groups as to what needs to happen during um, a wellness exam in terms of screening for preventable diseases as well as. Um, uh, vaccinations and immunization updates. So I talk about this with the medical students and please remember that all providers are also patients. So even though I'm a physician, I'm a family medicine physician, board certified, have, you know, uh, some fancy letters after my name that means I've impressed somebody, but I'm still a patient. And so I personally um, had to leave my primary care physician of 18 years um, when I moved up here. And now I found another primary care physician who's in the, uh, the greater Des Moines area and we're getting along famously. But I tell you what, leaving my um, leaving my doctor was a huge. It just it it didn't feel good because um, she knew me so well, and she she knew when I was trying to pull a fast one on her, and maybe not being as honest with her or myself as I should have been. So um, we will I will get there with my with my new primary care provider. Um, but um, I I just want you to know that. Um, Physicians are patients, and physicians care for patients, and physicians' assistants are patients, and physicians' assistants care for patients. So um, all of this is, it's just one big continual loop. So does everyone need an annual physical? Well, like any um, statement, there are, there are pros and cons. There are people who say yes, and there are people who say no. So I found just a couple of quotes here. Um, this was when I was preparing this lecture for the first time. Um, providing it for um, a group of employees at the uh, university that I worked 
at in Kansas City. And so um, that was in uh, 2018. But it's still it's still the truth that uh, the CDC believes that, you know, this is a time that we can kind of um, identify health issues before they start. And if you do identify a something bad, then it's going to be early when the chances for a complete cure are um, more probable. And then there's this article from Time where it said that maybe um, an annual health exam for many people would be just kind of a waste in time and money. But if you go on to read this quote, this is the same Time article, and they also said that closer physician-patient relationships may improve quality of care. And um, they went on to mention in this article that uh, this gives the provider, and I, I use provider because um, I don't want to discount nurse practitioners or physician's assistants who are mid-levels that also provide um, provide family uh, family care. Um, it, um, I am a physician, but that doesn't mean that I, I do anything differently than a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant would do when providing um, an annual wellness exam. So basically the article went on to say that um, we would be able to know what a uh, what a patient um, sounds like, um, you know, what their heart sounds like, what their lungs sound like, what their um, abdomen feels like when we when we examine it when they're not having any pain so that when they come in and they're having some sort of an issue we recognize oh that's different than it was at their annual physical so um, it also um, feel uh, it makes the patients if they come in and just sit down and get to know you a little bit and get get let you get to know them it makes them feel a little bit better about calling you when maybe they're not sick sick but they just have this question and they can't get rid of it and they they just want to just kind of want to see you and talk it out so that's why I feel like um, annual wellness visits are indicated and then I'm going to talk a little bit about my own experience that I take care of patients that have a variety of um, health uh, conditions so maybe somebody has hypothyroidism and type 2 diabetes and hyperlipidemia and high blood pressure and obesity and by the time we see them to go over their regular medicines and things like this, there's not a lot of time in that um, encounter to review, oh, wait a minute, is it time for your colonoscopy or have you had your um, your uh, female exam or um, did you need to have um, a DEXA scan? So there's uh, the wellness issues get kind of pushed to the end and then we kind of run out of time. So during a wellness visit, I can uh, learn what's new with my patient, learn what, um, what my patient's thinking about where they would like to see themselves from a health status five years down the road so that we can then partner and I can help them uh, make little mini goals and uh, achieve their um, goals a little faster than maybe they could on their own. So it's not necessarily the exam, although the exam is a big part of it. But it's also just kind of the talking and the getting to know the patient on a different level that happens during a wellness exam that is beneficial both for the, the provider as well as for the patient, in my opinion. Okay, water break. So let's talk about what is water. And so what is wellness? Silly Sarah. Um, wellness is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is the definition by the World Health Organization. It's on their website. You can look it up yourself. I don't think, given this definition, that anybody on this planet is completely well because you're always going to have some not well-being. Um, maybe you're not as maybe your mental well-being is not as it was before the pandemic when you have now been isolated and cut off from um, hugging your uh, extended family members and doing Thanksgiving by Zoom. These types of things kind of affected all of our uh, mental and social well-beings. Um, and so I believe that the um, that this is a great definition um, and it's something to strive for, but um, 
and the most important thing is that it's wellness is not just not being sick. Wellness is a different thing than just not being sick or not having um, an illness. And so let's talk about some of the um, components of wellness. And the first thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the non-medical stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I'm sort of a frustrated social worker at heart. I love to hear people's stories. I love to hear why they chose the the career that they chose or um, I like to hear about upcoming vacations and um, funny things that the kids did uh, at home last night and so um, I like to have a relationship with my with my patients but besides their relationship with me I know that it's really important for them to have relationships with other people now by relationships I'm not talking about romantic relationships or sexual relationships a relationship could be with somebody who has just been present for many many years um, sometimes um, when if I were to ask somebody um, if I were to ask a group of five people okay I'm gonna give you three minutes and then you're gonna die. But in those three minutes, you get to spend time with one person. Who would it be? For many people, they would choose their spouse. Um, for many people, they would choose um, one of their children or a sibling. But for many people, they would choose a very close friend. Not um, that they have ever dated this friend or been um, had a sexual or romantic relationship with this friend, but just, that's my person. That's the person that I want to um, spend my last three minutes on this world with. So um, they did a study, they, the, the they, and I've got the, uh, I've got the source down here um, if you want to look it up. But um, they did a study of over 300,000 people and they found that a lack of strong relationships increased the risk of premature death from all causes by greater than 50%. So, and I apologize for the typo, gosh darn it. Mm. Um, but this is greater than um, obesity and physical inactivity. Um, and we know that when somebody is stressed, um, they release hormones that do bad things to the body. But what, we, what we're recently finding out is that caring behavior, either somebody caring, doing a caring behavior for you or you doing a caring behavior for other people releases a stress reducing hormone. So stress can clog heart arteries, um, affect gut function, um, insulin regulation, um, it can um, disturb your sleep, it can disturb your immunity, but if you care about somebody and you are the recipient of a caring behavior, then you may re um, release a stress reducing hormone to counter interact um, all of those bad things so I think relationships are awesome again frustrated social worker wish I could have been a social worker just no time I had to choose something I chose being a physician but the great thing about physician is I get to ask these types of questions of people and satisfy that little social worker itch of mine okay more water sorry let's talk about habits I think if you look at me you know that I'm overweight and therefore I have um, a bad habit of eating too much of good healthy foods. I do have a variety of foods and I eat healthy foods but I also eat way too much of the the brownies and the things that are not necessarily so healthy but gosh they taste good so that's a habit that I personally am working on. I've never smoked, I've never used drugs, um, I ex occasionally have an alcohol um, alcohol beverage if I'm you know uh, with a friend or something but it's not um, a problem in my life but for some people um, food um, alcohol drugs cigarettes are um, toxic habits and um, they interfere with that person being the person that they want to be by the same token some people have habits um, that are good for them um, for example exercise um, that's a great habit um, meditation that's a great habit it's stress reducing yoga it's a great habit it's stress reducing so there are good habits and there are bad habits um, unfortunately I've got the bad habit of liking to eat too much 
and I don't have the good habit of balancing that with daily exercise. So that's why I'm overweight. So this is um, just a little self-disclosure of my habits. Other habits that we might talk to people about would be, what are your sleep habits? Um, what are your um, um, caffeine habits? How much caffeine do you use? Um, what are your um, what are your habits for um, um, wearing your seatbelt? Because everybody should wear their seatbelt. So this, these are some habits that uh, your um, primary care provider may discuss with you at your annual wellness exam. Um, just to try to uh, commend you for doing the things that you're doing that are good and maybe slightly give you a little nudge to change the things that you're doing that aren't necessarily as healthy for you. So um, that's what we talk about. Um, it's a non-medical thing, but I think it's an important thing, and that's part of what would be explored during an annual wellness encounter. Also explored are um, matters of spirituality, and not every primary care provider knows that they're doing this, but I think if they if they really look, they are, because we want to know what fills our patients' cups. And for some of you, that is um, belonging to a specific faith-based organization that worships a deity in a specific way. And for a lot of you, you don't particularly believe in a um, supreme being and you would consider yourself an atheist, but you still are a spiritual human being and maybe you get what's called like a runner's high when, and trust me, I know nothing about this from my own personal experience, but I've been told that people who run oftentimes will feel um, almost the time of um, complete peace or euphoria and that's called the runner's high and in a way that's that's spirituality that's something that makes them feel good um, other people um, practice meditation and they get to a place where they don't think about anything and that feels good some people are moved to tears by a beautiful piece of music and that um, that's a spiritual response. So um, I put a picture of a tree in there because other people are um, not necessarily uh, religious, um, but they really uh, enjoy nature and they enjoy being out in the in the open air and hiking and looking at how the bugs interact with the plants and uh, and things like that. So these are all kind of a related to spirituality and um, there's been a lot of recent research about spirituality and how um, spirituality um, is very tied to whether a person has um, wellness or not. Um, so this is something that your, your, your provider might just say, so what do you like to do? What, what fills your cup? What makes you happy? And, uh, and for some of you, um, it would be um, spending time with your family. For some of you, it would be walking the dog. Um, but this is the reason that your provider will ask you this is because uh, we want to make sure that everybody has something that makes them um, feel good or feel at peace. Okay, now we're going to move on to the medical stuff. Told you it was happening. So... Um, this slide, um, the picture here I took uh, at the Des Moines University Family Medicine Clinic, and this is where um, when a patient is brought back from the waiting room, um, they would stop and have their vital signs assessed. So the reason we do this is um, the heart rate, the oxygen saturation, the blood pressure, the temperature, the height and the weight, um, and changes among those types of um, of measurements, um, tell the provider a lot about um, health issues that might be going on. So I'm going to try to use my headset to mute so that I can cough. I apologize. I sure hope that worked and that you didn't hear me cough. But anywho, um, <coughs> So um, after the vital signs are done, and you know, you don't have to look at your weight. You don't have to, and the, you can just tell the, um, you can tell the MA, you know, I don't really want to know what I weigh, and that is fine. Um, some people don't want to know. They have a history of eating disorders, and they don't want to be triggered, or they're just embarrassed, and they don't want to know, and that's fine. You don't have to know, but we do ask that you... Um, that you let us uh, obtain your vital signs because it means a lot to the provider and uh, can help indicate 
um, health issues um, or health uh, things that might need to be worked on. Okay, so now, oh, I'm sorry, I'm still on the slide. I got all distracted with my cough. Um, the provider, um, then you would go to a, a room and when the provider comes in, um, you would kind of review your histories for updates. So have you had any surgeries since I saw you last? Um, everything going okay with your family? Um, have you started smoking? Have you stopped smoking? Um, kind of review your habits, um, review your social situation. Are you still living in the same place? Do you still have the same people in your home that were in your home last time? Um, maybe you've had a change in job. Uh, maybe you have um, um, had a, a, a loss. Maybe you, um, maybe you lost your mom or your um, brother or your child and uh, need to let your primary care provider know that so that they know that that stressor is, um, could be affecting your health. Then the uh, provider would most likely do like a head to toe uh, exam. Um, it varies with recommendations and, and personal preference. Um, you, um, and we'll get to this in the next slide. Um, if the provider recommends a specific exam and you just really don't want it to be done, you can certainly decline it. Um, nobody, doing an exam without the patient's consent is basically assault. And we all know that that is not what we want to do. We don't want to assault our patients, we want to help them. So if you have a specific complaint, maybe for example, um, you don't want somebody to uh, evaluate the range of motion of your elbow for whatever reason. And uh, the, so you can say, I just don't want you to do my elbow. And then the provider would probably ask you a couple of questions about that, but um, certainly would respect your wishes. Then after the exam, you would talk about your um, health issues, um, your own health goals, what you would like to achieve, and your plan. Um, and then there would probably be discussion of recommended screenings and vaccinations. And we're going to get to that in just a little bit. Um, before we go to that part, though, I did want to talk about your um, a note about physical exams and especially um, that you have a right to know who will provide your exam. Um, a lot of people have students that are working with them and um, usually, uh, well, the student would of course introduce themselves. I've got a little picture of this girl playing with her doctor toys and I just thought she was so cute. Um, but I think um, you have a right to say, I don't want a, a student to do my exam. I prefer, prefer the provider. Um, the By the time students get to their clerkships, that means that they have done a lot of in-classroom practice um, of all of the examination um, um, tricks up their sleeve and they've been checked off by faculty. So we feel that they are that they're okay to do it or we wouldn't ask them to do it for you. But again, you have the right to say whether or not you want to have anybody involved in your care. Also, if um, the patient, if the if your provider again wants to um, see how you can bend your elbows and that makes you uncomfortable or anything else, you have the right to say, I don't want you to do that. And um, the provider would probably ask you why and you can discuss, you can, you can discuss that at that time. Um, this happens a lot for uh, private exams. Um, a lot of times a provider will think that doing a um, pelvic exam on a woman, for example, is indicated and the woman just really does not want to do that. So, uh, of course, nobody's going to make you do any exam you don't want to do, but, but there will probably need to be a discussion about it just so that um, it can be documented and, um, and, and we can follow up on that later, see if maybe you've changed your mind next time. Um, also wanted to note that during the pandemic, um, some head and neck exams might be abbreviated or altered in some clinics. Um, I personally am not um, doing this, but I have heard that some uh, clinics are asking the patients to wear their mask during the entire visit and therefore are not able to inspect the nose or the mouth. And um, so here's just a little article that kind of talks about um, the fact that that might be altered in a clinic that you go to. It doesn't mean um, 
it doesn't, I mean, the, the provider would use um, their own common sense as to whether or not it's okay to defer that exam based on your, on your history and everything. But I just wanted you to know that that might be something that's going on um, at this time. Okay, um, water. So we talked about um, telling you what the recommendations are. So who makes these recommendations? Well, most insurance companies will go by what is um, recommended by the um, United States Preventive Services Task Force, USPSTF, and they make screenings for everything under the sun. Um, and they, um, these are it's a panel put together that has people from every walk of life and they look at evidence-based medicine um, and they decide what is um, recommended um, based on um, what the, the literature suggests and what the data is. Um, insurance companies generally will go by those recommendations for, for payment. There are a few exceptions. For example, um, <clears throat> the USPSTF recommends um, pap smears um, every three years for a certain um, for a certain part for a certain um, population of women but if uh, if the provider and the patient decide that they want to do a pap smear every year insurance companies are generally going to pay for that even though it's not it's it goes above and beyond the recommendations um, and then for the vaccines we look at the immunization tables that are uh, published by the Centers for Disease Control um, Dr. Fauci and his friends and uh, they do their immunization recs based on the National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases again these are experts in the field that look at um, numbers and make um, recommendations based on uh, what is um, what is good for uh, what is good for specific segments of the population? Okay, so um, but almost everybody gets some form of counseling, and that's because it's recommended by the USPSTF. And so um, I just uh, I was doing some just searching for what do people have out there for what you can expect in your um, wellness exam and the um, the Cleveland Clinic has an actual uh, brochure about what an adult can expect in their wellness exam and this is counseling that they say is for all adults so smoking cessation alcohol and drug abuse prevention seatbelt safety safe sex practices nutrition and exercise and firearm safety so if you have a gun um, then your provider may ask about how um, how do you make sure that it stays safe do you have um, do you keep it locked you know that type of thing um, and then for some people um, might discuss based on their age their gender and their health history hormone replacement or osteoporosis prevention then that's for all adults now we get into um, screening um, that is based on age and gender so um, interestingly enough both men and women should be screened for breast cancer um, breast cancer hits um, hits men not as frequently as women but it is known and therefore um, a discussion of breast health and breast awareness is uh, indicated at a wellness exam so that if a man um, has um, uh, an issue you know three months later after the wellness exam he's at least been told um, you know if you have this symptom that would be something a reason to come back and see me um, cervical cancer screening of course just for women prostate cancer screening of course just for men uh, then col cholesterol screening colorectal cancer screening diabetes screening hypertension screening hypertension is a fancy word for high blood pressure osteoporosis screening and um, sexually transmitted infection screening uh, would be um, recommended for age, um, specific age groups, specific gender groups, and specific um, um, habits and, and histories that are obtained in the um, interview. So here is a list of the recommended immunizations and vaccines. Um, as you, as parents among you know, um, the childhood immunization um, 
it is just, it's, you know, woo, it's so detailed. So there is no way to really put that on one slide. So I just kind of put the names of the specific um, um, shots that are recommended for um, babies, kids, and teens. And then on the adult, um, the hepatitis A and B and the meningococcal are only recommended for uh, people who meet certain criteria for um, histories, um, meaning places that they've worked or traveled or um, things like that. Um, I put the COVID-19 um, vaccine here because it's out and um, I've had one dose. I believe by the time um, this airs, I will have had my second dose. We do not have it at our clinic yet for um, patients, um, but we are on the list and we're going by what um, every week um, on Friday, Polk County decides who gets the vaccine the next week. And we are on the list and they know we're on the list and we have, um, we've signed all of our papers and have been inspected and, and we're good to go. So as soon as we have the COVID-19 vaccine, we will certainly, um, let our patients know that they can come get it. But these are some um, immunizations that adults may qualify for. And I wanted to talk about um, a couple that are, um, that people really don't think about, and that is the varicella zoster. This is a, a vaccine to prevent shingles. And um, those of you who know people who've had shingles, it's a horrible disease, but um, we're not as worried about the shingles as we are the, um, the problem that, that can come after it, which is um, post-herpetic neuropathy. And people who have that can have just a lifetime of pain. So we want to prevent the shingles because the shingles hurt, but mostly we want to prevent the uh, lifetime of pain. This is indicated for anybody 50 um, years or older. And if you had the old Zostavax, then you need to come in and get the new uh, the newer vaccine, which is a two-shot vaccine, vaccine um, protocol um, because it will protect you better. Um, another um, thing that I wanted to point out is uh, besides having your annual flu shot, um, we all know that people who are uh, pneumococcal is sometimes called the pneumonia shot. And uh, we know that people age 65 and older qualify for a pneumonia shot. But what you may not know is that uh, younger people who have a health condition such as um, diabetes or asthma um, also qualify for a pneumonia shot, as well as anyone 21 years or older who um, is a smoker um, should be having a pneumonia shot to prevent pneumonia. Um, so, and insurance will pay for that. So um, this is something that a lot of people don't know about, and so they don't um, necessarily uh, see their physician to get that. Okay. So what happens after a wellness exam? Well, maybe we're going to uh, have the nurse bring in some vaccinations if you've agreed to that. Maybe we'll do, go ahead and do um, a blood draw and uh, run some labs. Um, maybe we'll do a special, class, special test like an EKG right there in the clinic. This is an EKG machine. Um, maybe we'll refer you to another provider. Maybe we need you to see um, a specialist because your um, rheumatoid arthritis is uh, not as well controlled as it has been for the past three or four years. And so we need a specialist to um, give us some advice on what to do next. Um, or maybe you need to see um, any other, I mean, there's so many, so many specialists. I mean, you just pick a disease and there's somebody who specializes in that. So um, if, if we feel that we cannot take care of you, um, or if the if a specialist would add something to your care, um, certainly we're going to refer you. Um, and sometimes patients just want to see um, a specialist, even though they have trust in us as family um, family medicine providers that that we know what we're doing. They just really want to see you know a specialist for whatever reason, and that's absolutely fine with us. So, okay, so that might happen. So now I want to talk about our clinic, and uh, our clinic is um, at 3200 uh, Des Moines Avenue. That is the east side of our campus, which stretches out, I think there are like three city blocks 
um, on um, Grand Avenue that uh, but this is at the very east side this is the entryway uh, here on the right and um, you've probably seen this um, on your travels along Grand Avenue and just been like ah what's that now you know so um, and there are some patient friendly reasons that I think you should come see our clinic first of all these are two of our receptionists they are um, in uh, a little room that has been plexiglassed away from the waiting room um, these were some measures that were taken at the beginning of the pandemic to keep our staff um, as well as patients safe um, everybody in our clinic will wear a glove will wear a mask um, sometimes they'll wear face shields as well um, but uh, the things that are good for for patients that I wanted to point out is that excuse me if you're sick sometimes you want to be seen right then and we do have same-day appointments available almost every day um, we also for our established patients patients that we've seen before we have drive-through screening if you feel like you know I've got some I've got some cough and sore throat and I'm not sure if it's COVID or strep throat or flu we can actually have you drive up to one of our drive up clinics um, and uh, and send a, a provider out to your car they can do kind of a mini exam with you in your car and then go ahead and test you um, COVID tests of course have to be sent out but we have rapid tests for strep and for flu that we can get those results back to you within three to five minutes um, we do have covered parking um, which are just steps away from our clinic you don't have to uh, you don't have to go outside you just go straight from the covered parking right into the building uh, we have on-site radiology and blood draw services um, sometimes we can draw your lab and give the result right then um, for example if um, diabetics um, oftentimes need to have their we call it hemoglobin a1c and it's like a, a check of what the average blood sugar was for the past three months well we can just do that right there we don't need to send that off we can just do that we can also look at your blood count and some um, chemistries you know see what your um, body salts are things like that we have other clinics in the same building that we're on the fifth floor um, but we have other clinics in our building we have uh, physical therapy podiatry and osteopathic manipulation so if we need to refer people to them it's easy peasy um, we share the same um, uh, computer tool and it's just uh, it's easy for us to 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 get you in and it's easy for us to see what they did and uh, um, soon we're going to have behavioral medicine uh, coming into our uh, tower clinic as well and um, that will mean that we could refer you to psychiatry or for counseling um, right there in our own building so um, these are all patient friendly features that I wanted to point out um, if you would like to see any of these people these are our providers uh, Dr. Akins, uh, Dr. Crosby, Rachel Doggett, um, Sheila Garner, Jolene Gavant and April Vargas are all uh, physicians assistants with just years of um, experience and they are fabulous um, Dr. Harder yours truly and Dr. Volker um, I would trust um, any of these people to care for me or my family and um, they are very very good um, you could call 515-271-1700 uh, for an appointment if you're not sure whether or not our clinic would be right for you and you want to discuss um, specific questions you could certainly um, email me um, here's my email it's Sarah Parrot H on the end of Sarah two R's two T's on Parrot at dmu.edu or our practice manager Megan Johnson um, who is a um, nurse um, with years of experience both in uh, primary care and she also did a lot of work um, in cancer units before um, but she um, she can be reached at megan.johnson at dmu.edu or her number is 515-271-1493 again if you just you're not sure whether or not the clinic would be right for you and you just have a couple of questions or maybe you want some help in choosing a provider that meets what you want your provider to be um, we could certainly talk you through those types of decisions 
And finally, if you have any questions about this presentation, please send them to Hannah. Um, she's going to collect them all and get them to all of the um, speakers. And uh, hopefully we'll get back to you in a fast manner um, to answer any questions that you have about annual wellness exam or um, anything that uh, is mentioned in any of the um, mini medical school lectures. Again, it has been a pleasure to speak with you. I was supposed to keep this at 30 minutes and I apologize, I went 41 minutes. Uh, but it was a pleasure to speak with you and I hope to meet some of you face to face one day. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Parrott. Well, everyone, I can't believe it, but we've come to the end and we've finally completed mini med school for 2021. We've been on this virtual journey together and I hope you have enjoyed it. I want to hear from you. I want to know if you liked it, um, if you would appreciate us maybe keeping some sort of virtual component going forward. I know I've heard from some that they enjoy the fact that they can get into their slippers and their pajamas and watch it from the comfort of their home in the evening and they don't have to go out in the cold. And I've heard Heard from others that they aren't participating this year because they would rather just only do it in person. And you know what? I respect both of those and I can definitely understand both sides of it. So let us know if you enjoyed it. Let us know how you thought it all went. Um, and please, of course, send questions to me. Anything that you heard Dr. Parrott bring up tonight that interests you or maybe something she didn't bring up that you want to ask her, please email those to me and you can e email them to questions at dmu.edu and I will be happy to get an answer for you. So again, thank you for tuning in. Congratulations for all of you who watch everything in our series and remember to share with your friends. And if you're interested in watching anything that you missed, please go back to the website dmu.edu slash minimed and check them out again. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.